Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, the original YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to beautiful Studio G. It's the middle of May 2023. The weather has finally moderated in northern Illinois and you are watching tips number 877. It's part two of a two-part video. Make sure you watch part one, which is number 876 or you won't understand what I'm doing here but the whole purpose of this video is to showcase this Vivor magnetic drill press that was gifted to me this is not a sponsored video even though it says so up above I am not paid to do this however I did receive this as a gift along with the cutters and a lot of that is described in part one so stick with me now as we drill some big holes in steel plate and demonstrate the usefulness of this machine, I also would like to try to tap a hole to see if that is feasible with this machine without the chuck spinning backwards and off of the spindle uh, when I back the tap out. So this is an experiment for me and I guess for you. And uh, let's get started. This is a very strong magnet. Let me demonstrate, but excuse the dorky white socks and black shoes. But there really is no way that I could ever pull this off. I'm a weakling anyway, but you know, that's not coming off. Be sure and turn the magnet off when you're not using it so you do not overheat it. Now stop snooping around. I didn't put the carton up back here, but quit snooping around at my other stuff. We're talking about this, please. Like I'm talking to a high school class. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, what I'm going to do is i got two steel plates here. This is quarter inch thick. This is three eighths thick. And I'm going to drill several holes in that just as an exercise. This is not really a project at all. But remember that I got six cutters, annular cutters, with this machine but they are metric. So the first one that I'm going to use, not the one in here, but it's a 21 millimeter. Now I've been accused so often of not knowing what the metric system is, but that's approximately 825 thousandths, which is about 5364. But let's round it off to 13 16. So I'm going to drill a 13 16 hole to start with. But I need to tell you something else here, which I think, well, I'm a champion of the obvious, but let's go through it anyway. Okay, here's one of the beauties of this machine. Imagine drilling a large hole in one of these plates here using this big electric drill. And I've done it many times, but it is quite a chore. It is no easy job to drill, let's say, a 7 8 hole in steel plate. A lot of you are using uh, uh, not lasers, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of, you know what I mean, not, not a cutting torch, plasma. Okay, but in order to drill a big hole, you'd have to start with a quarter pilot, this is a half, then you'd go with a bigger one, and when I was back in my prime, I was doing this at school with even a much bigger drill than this, it was a Miller's Falls with a three-quarter chuck, I was all alone in the shop, standing on the bench, drilling a hole, that drill caught, it spun around, there was no killing that motor on that Miller's Falls. It looked like something the Three Stooges used. It threw me off the bench. Luckily, I landed on my feet uninjured, but it scared the heck out of me. So let's do it the right way. And these produce a pretty nice clean hole that is pretty much on size. Not the same as boring, but they're fairly accurate. Raise your hand and leave a comment if you've ever had an incident with a large, heavy-duty, powerful electric drill. I mentioned this in the other video, but it bears repeating. These annular cutters, they're metric, have a, not a Weldon shank, but it's a very quick-acting uh, shank. I forgot the name of it. I'll try to find that. But in putting these in, the pilot or the pin, whatever you want to call that, this is not a drill, goes in first right up to the shoulder and then this is ready to go into the spindle. And this is so easy to do. Imagine being on the 21st floor of a skyscraper hanging from a safety belt needing tools. So there's no tools required. So I will twist the black part. I know my big paws are in the way, but now 
it's locked and ready to use similarly to get it out but before I take it out the pin here is spring loaded and serves two purposes one is to help you locate on your layout mark where you're going to drill and number two it is meant to eject the core or the plug pretty neat and by the way I'm not going to use coolant but if the coolant tank was on here the coolant or oil would run along the flat spot of the pilot and right to the teeth of the cutter awesome okay here's the setup you can see that I have a Wilton C clamp I always use Wilton for best results holding the plate onto a wooden table and the plate is hanging over and I'm now at the point where I'm going to slide the drill press around until the pilot is aligned with the layout mark so that's all you're going to see of that because I'm finally ready to drill sorry for talking so much and I'm going to use plenty of oil we're ready to go and on goes the magnet like that so it's firmly attached now as you can see and I am ready to drill I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there to start with and I'm going to run it at a fairly slow speed I will not know exactly the speed there is no indicator for that but I might vary the speed depending on how this goes so let's get drilling here and wear your safety glasses I slowed it down a little bit that's too much <laughs> it's very sensitive it's bogging down at slow speed now there it kicked in Now what I read in the manual or on the website is that as far as the speed is concerned when you uh, when the motor senses a load then it will speed up a little bit but it seemed like it was hunting didn't it so I'll run it at a faster speed on the next one but look at that nice hole imagine doing that by the alternate method that I talked about earlier all right this is 3 8 plate the previous one was 1 4th thick but notice that that little ejector pin did not push the plug out of the annular cutter minor disappointment on that but uh, I can tap it out easily enough now this is a 27 millimeter that's a little bit over about two millimeters over one inch and I have sped it up a little bit I want to see if I can get away from that fluctuating uh, speed so there it is you heard it or not but the plug did get, get ejected and it's on the floor I'm not going to try to pick it up because it's a little bit warm I'm sure but let me get the press out of the way and we'll examine that 27 millimeter hole okay that's the back side there is a burr but not real bad but it would have to be ground off and uh, grabbing the Shars caliper here twenty six almost twenty seven millimeter but I didn't take much time to add. I don't I do not like using a caliper for this purpose that's I wouldn't normally do that but you can see it's pretty much on size and but the whole plate is pretty warm there was a lot of friction 
I have installed the chuck along with a 5 16 drill and because the length of this is considerable, especially when compared with one of the annular cutters, I had to raise the entire head on the secondary dovetail by loosening this screw and raising it up like I showed you in uh, part one and now that will be tightened down and I'm ready to drill. All right, I'm ready to drill that 5 16 hole. Make absolutely sure you have the magnet on. Of course, if you do not have the magnet on, the drill motor will not start. And that's a great safety feature on this wonderful Orange Beaver magnetic drill press. Thank you, Iris. All right, let's drill. I did not center punch. Alright, this is a 3816 coarse tap. I'm going to put a little oil on there. Now I'm wearing this because I'm always a little worried about a tap breaking, but uh, I have to be very careful here to turn the motor off before I reverse it. Otherwise it will bottom out, could break, I, I do not know. It's a fairly low speed, we'll see if it has the torque to do what I want. I backed it out and I'm going to tighten this with a cheater and we'll try it again. And reverse. that did work but I'm not going to recommend this. It would need a different type of a tap holder. As I said earlier, a hard shank with hardened jaws it just does not grip. So forget about tapping. But at least the chuck did not spin off of its thread. Maybe due to the Loctite, I don't know. And don't forget to turn the magnet off because it's pretty darn warm now. They say after three hours it'll burn, burn up, so consider that. Well, that concludes this video. Hope you had a few laughs and uh, enjoyed the content. If you do, remember, give me a thumbs up. Thanks to Vivor. Thanks to you for watching. All right. Several uh, items in extra credit. Be sure and stick around for that. Make sure you had watched part one and 1,400 other videos you have yet to watch if you're new to my channel. This is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, saying so long for now. The video is over, but here's just a little bit of extra foolish credit. While I was filming the intro, I was sitting on that stool over there, and it was a little bit too high. A milk crate was a little bit too low, so I'm sitting on two Sears catalogs, as if they print them anymore. But the question here is, and see who can answer this, who was a world-famous pianist, long dead, that had a trademark of sitting on big phone books, like Chicago or New York phone books. That was part of his act for his whole career. Who was that wonderful pianist? And yes, the great jazz pianist Errol Garner sat, sat on a, a Chicago phone book, Yellow Pages. <laughs> Another question, who am I impersonating with these outrageous aviator sunglasses? Put it in the comments below. Boy, those are tough lenses. All right, Henry has been to the dollar store. What do you got there, a tarantula? The Black Widow. Oh, oh, it's a Black Widow. All right, what does it do? Scares people. Go. Oh, my gosh. Step on it. Kill it. <laughs>